Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we're gonna to be chatting about VO2 max testing, also lactate threshold testing. I'm Dr. Michael Tunman, board certified cardiologist, heart attack and stroke prevention expert, founder of Apollo Cardiology here in St. Louis, Missouri. So Apollo was launched uh, about two years ago, and we're gonna be upgrading our facility uh, in August, September. And we're gonna be interested in adding some more technologies to be able to monitor people's mitochondrial function. So we're going to be looking at ways to test the strength of the mitochondria, as well as uh, using, as you can see behind me, uh, reflecting on the glass there, some red light or photobiomodulation to actually stimulate the mitochondria. So tonight's talk is not going to be talking about light shaping health. Uh, I've done many of those talks and we'll keep doing those ones. So no exclusions on water for those uh, from the quantum health world. We're going to be talking a little bit more about fats, carbohydrates, and what the mitochondria do with those things, but mainly looking through the lens of cardiovascular health, um, and there's a test called VO2 max testing. I did do a poll on my story today. Looks like about only four people have ever had that test done. Most people haven't, or maybe they just don't know what the test is. So tonight I can explain it a little bit, how it can be used to measure you know, how strong your mitochondria are at this point. And then we'll be talking about ways that you can improve it in the future. So the, uh, the caveat so is yes, I'm a board certified cardiologist and I've done hundreds if not thousands of cardiovascular stress tests. But I've only done a few of the uh, pulmonary function VO2 max testing, uh, mainly that was in my uh, cardiovascular training, which is three years after three years of internal medicine and after four years of medical school. But uh, the type of VO2 max testing I was doing was for patients who were extremely sick and they were getting evaluated to see do they need a heart transplant. Because at a certain point, you have such a bad pump, uh, if the pump can't pump the oxygenated blood around the system, uh, you're not going to do well. Uh, so if you had a very low VO2 max on this test, uh, you got referred on for a cardiac transplant. Now they have more uh, advanced technologies, the left ventricular assist devices, LVADs, that sometimes that is, uh, can be used as a destination instead of having to uh, bridge them on an LVAD to a transplant. But that's neither here nor there. Talk, talking about uh, VO2 max more for the uh, people interested in optimizing their health. So, um, so. So I mentioned I've done hundreds if not thousands of stress tests, typically on a treadmill. Uh, the most common protocol people do is known as the Bruce protocol. You walk on a treadmill, every three minutes, the treadmill goes a little bit higher, a little bit faster, and we go until you tire out. Now, stress tests are generally good if you're looking for uh, people's symptoms of chest tightness, pressure with activity, shortness of breath, unexplained fatigue. You know, if you fail a stress test by having your symptoms or you see EKG changes, could indicate that you have a severe blockage in one of your coronary arteries and you're gonna be optimized on your medications. Potentially you're gonna have an angiogram or, or a CT uh, angiogram looking to see the degree of stenosis, but uh, that's not the greatest test. We've talked about you know, better tests looking at uh, cardiovascular health in the past, CT coronary chasm score, CMTs, but exercise capacity is measured on these tests. So if you can do at least seven METs of physical activity, uh, you generally have pretty good physical conditioning. You know, a MET is uh, one as you sitting here at rest, just breathing in oxygen, burning for energy. Seven METs is seven times as much uh, energy at that rest. And it's about 3.5 milliliters per kilogram per minute per MET. Don't worry about that so much right now. But the uh, plain treadmill stress test does not give you a VO2 max directly. To actually get a direct VO2 mask, uh, you need to have a mask on that's measuring uh, the carbon dioxide that you breathe out as well as the oxygen you breathe in. So I know external oxygen is going in, it's just still room air, uh, but you'll measure your respiratory quotient and that'll basically tell you at rest, uh, how well are you burning fat for energy? Your respiratory quotient should be about 0.7. Uh, as you exercise, you're eventually not gonna be able to continue to burn fat for energy. You're gonna get into the period where you're gonna have to burn sugar for energy and your respiratory quotient goes up. When it's going up, your lactic acidosis, I should say your lactate, uh, is going up. Um, lactate isn't a, you know, necessarily evil byproduct. You know, people, have, you know, are, uh, runners or bikers, you know, have hit the wall before. You know, they think it's all too much lactate. It's actually too much hydrogen, and the muscles are just seized up, and you need ATP or energy uh, to relax those muscles. And it's the hydrogen that's preventing that from happening. Lactate is actually very useful for brain uh, uh, fuel, uh, and also more elite athletes they can actually recycle that lactate quicker and they don't uh, they don't bonk as well. So first you get this test, you look and see what your respiratory quotient is, tells you how well you're burning 
fat or sugar at baseline. Uh, the way I'm going to ultimately use this uh, when I hopefully acquire this piece of equipment, and I'm actually going to acquire a bike instead of a treadmill, a little bit safer for patients who are not uh, likely to fall off. I think in my career, I've maybe had two people fall off and they both said they could do it. One guy was like 90 years old and I didn't really believe him, but uh, he didn't injure himself and we caught him before he uh, flew off the back of the treadmill. But a bike is a little bit safer in that aspect and you know it's just a slower uh, rise uh, normally for people. It's not the Bruce Perko where just really ramping up quickly like that. So the bike would measure your respiratory rate in and out, measure your oxygen consumption, your carbon dioxide out, and then we'd exercise you until we uh, fatigued you. And we'd, we'd measure blood pressure, heart rate, look at the EKG, but we're measuring that gas, which is very important. By looking at how that gas is um, being consumed and utilized, you would ultimately see your VO2 max, which is your maximal consumed oxygen. So your VO2 max uh, is essentially, you know, how big is your engine? It does not mean how efficient it is, but people who have a higher VO2 max tend to have a better capacity for burning oxygen and fuel sources for energy. So, you know, the Olympics are coming up soon. I've been like binge watching some uh, prior shows on uh, the, uh, what is that called, the Peacock Network on uh, TV, uh, watching some old Michael Phelps uh, events, and these guys with amazing endurance. You know, they're all likely to have very high VO2 maxes, but high VO2 max doesn't necessarily uh, pretend uh, excellent uh, exercise, let's see, winning or losing, it just gives you an idea that you generally probably have fairly healthy mitochondria. Um, it's more kind of a function of your lactate uh, threshold, which may determine uh, how good you do with uh, that high VO2 max. But, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, if you have a very low VO2 max, uh, your morbidity mortality is very high. You're not gonna live very long if you have a very low VO2 max. If you have a very high VO2 max, uh, longevity is likely on your side. So that's why you want to even care about what your VO2 max is. So, you know, you do this test, you'll get your VO2 max. I'm also looking into being able to do lactate threshold testing. Um, personally, uh, I'm just teaching myself how to do, do this. I've not previously uh, even had it done myself, and I'm a pretty uh, decent biohacker if I have access to these things. So I'll play around with it a little bit and then I add it once we get that, that regular VO2 max up. But basically like having, like, this is the 24-hour glucose monitor that I previously shown. The monitors are very similar to that. You prick the ear or you prick the uh, finger, get blood, and you can measure your lactate levels. You know, the higher it is, uh, the more you've gone from being a fat burner to a sugar burner. And so for those that are just joining, thank you. Um, you know, we're talking about mitochondria health and VO2 max being one of the better ways to tell you what is the efficiency of your engine. Um, so, you know, food, like I said, again, this isn't for the quantum people, but uh, you know, your main fuel sources um, are fats and carbohydrates. Uh, but those aren't what are actually going into your mitochondria. You know, it's, you know, you're actually putting those things in through different respiratory proteins, and you're stripping them down into hydrogen and electrons. And it's electrons as they flow through the electron transport chain. The faster they go, the faster the ATP spins, the more ATP comes out. You know, we've talked about that before, but you know, how do the foods come in? You know, the fats come in uh, through cytochrome 2, the carbohydrates come in through cytochrome 1. Don't worry about that so much tonight. But once the food stuffs get broken down into the electrons and the protons, the hydrogens, they have to move. At the end of it, oxygen uh, accepts that electron and you make water. So with photosynthesis, sunlight, the carbon dioxide in the air, and a little bit of water and minerals, and a plant is literally growing out of thin air, um, you know, with photosynthesis. The mitochondria are essentially reversing photosynthesis. Um, you will break down the carbohydrates or the fats that come into your system, and then when the mitochondria are done with them, you're breathing out carbon dioxide, you've made water inside the mitochondria, um, and energy is made uh, at the ATP ACE. So it's about energy flow which determines uh, you know, health and longevity. Um, but VO2 max is basically how well do you utilize that oxygen. Higher VO2 max, more efficient mitochondria. You know, at lower intensities of exercise, it's going to be fat burning. You, know, you have three different types of muscle fibers, you know, the slow twitch of the type one, 
the fast twitch or the 2A and the 2B. And the slow versus fast is basically how fast do they fatigue. It's not how fast do they fire. Um, the slow ones, you know, they basically will burn fat all day until you hit a certain point. And after that, your uh, body has to go into uh, burning sugar for energy. Uh, you're going to hit your VO2 max at that point. Uh, and you can still do sprint work, but if you're wanting to optimize mitochondrial function, you want to stay in that fat max. Uh, so that's more the low and slow zone two type of exercise. Uh, so where you can hold a conversation all day long, give mitochondria biogenesis, more mitochondria. They burn fat better for you. You can burn fat for energy, so weight loss, but more for longevity and endurance because you want to have uh, the ability to burn fat very effectively for energy. Uh, so once you've kind of you know, past the fat burning part and start having to burn into sugar, more lactate is going to be made. Uh, at some point, you'll hit a threshold where your body will not be able to recycle it fast enough and you're going to bonk or you're just going to have to stop the exercise because the muscles are going to kind of seize up. Um, but there's a certain level of lactate which will determine, you know, where you're going to kind of not be able to do that. And the, uh, you know, the peak endurance athletes, they're the ones that do it most efficiently. So, you know, for those that have previously done the VO2 max testing, you know, they'll give you your number and they'll compare you to your peers. Uh, so I have some normative data in front of me. You know, we'll just go for people, you know, between 40 and 49, because that's the range I'm currently in. But a, a good VO2 max would be 39 to 43.7 for a man. For a woman between 40 and 49, it's going to be 29 to 32.8. And that's measured in milliliters per kilogram per minute of oxygen consumed. Um, but to give you a caveat of what the uh, like the peak endurance athletes have, you know, it's typically going to be like the Nordic uh, skiers and the uh, the long distance cyclists that have the highest, as well as the marathon runners. Um, but I have a list of some of the people's highest uh, athlete VO2 maxes that they've obtained. Uh, Steve Pump, Steve Prefontaine was a uh, long distance runner in the seventies. Um, his was eighty four point four, so at least double what uh, somebody's good if somebody in their forties would have. And Lance Armstrong was 83.8, and that's going to be, uh, you know, from his conditioning. It doesn't matter what uh, performance-enhancing products he put in them. That's not going to boost his VO2 max. Uh, that was uh, just having good genetics and extremely efficient uh, training. Uh, so that's what I want to share tonight is, you know, what is VO2 max? Uh, that, you know, you're basically how big of an engine you have at, you know, burning oxygen in your mitochondria. You know, it is a somewhat of a metric of, you know, endurance athletes, like peak ability, but it doesn't mean that they're going to perform at that high level. Yeah, you know, that's going to be somewhat a, uh, more metric of how efficient they are uh, converting lactate back into energy. Uh, but for a kind of uh, weekend warrior or somebody more interested in longevity, the VO2 max is just an idea, uh, metric number that you can get on an exercise bike uh, that will tell you, are you having... Good longevity or do you have more to work on uh, you know you can see if you know, you have ischemia and all the usual stuff of a stress test but it's going to basically tell you how efficient your mitochondria are it will give you an exercise prescription tell you what zones to work your heart rate in uh, and intensity so that you build more efficient mitochondria to burn fat your respiratory quotient improves and you become a fat burning machine the better your mitochondria burn fat for energy uh, the better you tend to do uh, so you can measure the VO2 uh, cyclically every 90, 180 days and watch it improve or you know, at least not decrement and go down. Uh, so hoping to have this available at Apollo Cardiology in the uh, hopefully near future. You know, we're going to be moving spaces sometime either in August or September. And if you're a patient in St. Louis, be on the lookout for that. Uh, for those that aren't in St. Louis, you know, you know, I do work with patients remotely. You know, obviously, I can't uh, do a stress test on you remotely, but uh, if you're interested in giving an assessment of your cardiovascular health, uh, just send me a message. Uh, my main website is drprime.com. That has all the links to my prior videos, as well as you know links to gear that I personally use, any biohacking toys that I uh, currently like. So thank you guys for your attention tonight. This is an interesting topic. You know, I'm uh, learning along with you guys, and as I learn more, I'll share it. Uh, next week, I'm going to be doing a talk with one of the uh, photobomodulation uh, companies. I'll be talking to one of their uh, CEOs and uh, talking about how this red light that's behind me, how it stimulates mitochondrial function. Uh, we'll be having definitely some red light panels at Apollo Cardiology to help stimulate people's mitochondrial function. Uh, maybe I'll have to do a test uh, 
with the VO2 uh, bike with the light on and off and see, uh, see how much improvement there is. That's more for the, uh, the quantum people to see you know, how much the light has an effect versus uh, the food has an effect. Uh, but for those uh, who joined tonight, thank you. Uh, this has been recorded and I'll go up on my Instagram TV channel in just a few minutes. Uh, if there's any questions I can answer, I'd be happy to answer them. But otherwise, I'll see you guys next week. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining tonight. All right. Well, thank you again for joining. We'll see you guys next Monday, 6 o'clock, all about red light therapy. Have a great week.